You're listening to the Monday Market Highlights brought to you by Milford. Good morning. It's Monday the 6th of September and I'm Roland from Milford. The key economic data was the US non-farm payrolls release, which materially disappointed compared to expectations. Total jobs added for August was 235,000 compared to consensus estimates of 733,000. The key weakness came in the services sector, with leisure and hospitality, for example, seeing no month-on-month employment growth. The unemployment rate did, however, come in line at 5.2%. The other key data point in this release is average hourly earnings, which continues to accelerate, increasing 0.6% month-on-month compared to 0.3% expected. This takes full-year wage inflation to 4.3%. However, if you annualise the previous month, the US is tracking at 7.4% annual wage inflation. Dwelling prices in Australia continue to grind higher, albeit at a slower rate, with national house prices up 1.5% month-on-month, taking annual growth to 18.4%. Over the past year, house prices have grown at almost 11 times faster than wages, and affordability will likely become an issue again. Finally, Australian GDP exceeded expectations, growing 0.7% quarter-on-quarter, taking full-year GDP growth to 9.6%. Of course, annual numbers are inflated due to the impacts of COVID. Interestingly, over the past two years, GDP has only grown at 2.8% or 1.4% each year, a much more subdued level of growth. Turning to equities, there was a lot of index news flow, as the EPRA NARET index, a closely followed global property index, updated its constituents, adding a number of Australian REITs. The 10 companies added to the index rallied 3% on average on the back of the news. However, Iron Gate and Abacus, which were expected to be included but didn't make the cut, fell 2% and 6% respectively on the day. In addition, on Friday evening, S&P announced changes to the various Australian indices, which will come into effect on the close of business on Friday the 17th of September. Lifestyle Communities, Pinnacle Investment, C-Link and Tyro all entered the ASX 200, with Jared Education, NRW Holdings, Newix and Westgold Resources exiting. Virgin Money UK also moved up into the ASX 100, with Borrell and Beach both exiting. Looking to the week ahead, PPI data in the US is released this week, with the market expecting 0.6% month-on-month growth, slowing from 1% growth in July. Remember, the PPI data tracks the average change over time in selling prices realised by domestic producers of goods and services. The RBA will have their monthly meeting tomorrow, where they will announce any change to the official cash rate, the three-year bond yield target, and also highlight their plans around tapering. Given the extent of the Australian lockdowns, no changes are expected in the official cash rate nor the bond yield target, and many economists are now expecting the RBA to walk back from their current tapering timetable, which was announced in July. We continue to closely monitor vaccination rates in Australia, particularly on the back of PM Scott Morrison's comments, where he highlighted international travel will be able to resume for states that have achieved an 80% vaccination rate for those aged 16 and older. The Australian government also managed to get their hands on another 4 million Pfizer doses from the UK, which will double the available vaccines for September. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week.